Hi, I'm Donald Zeraldo. I'm out here in the Niagara Peninsula in Canada. We are picking these lovely frozen grapes. It's January the 22nd. Sun is just going to be coming up, and these uh, students have been out here picking since 3 a.m. because the temperature is ideal at this time to make ice wine. It's uh, around negative 8, negative uh, 12 degrees Celsius. So it's uh, cold enough that all the water in the grapes freezes and uh, it leaves behind all the natural grape sugars in a higher concentration. The whole Niagara Peninsula, which is located in southern Ontario near Niagara Falls, that escarpment right there, 12,000 years ago, was where Niagara Falls came over. But that escarpment and the lake, Lake Ontario, which is one of the great lakes, five great lakes, that differential creates a microclimate. 90% of it is made up of water, so when the freezing freezes all the water and ice crystals, what you've got left is the sugar, acid, and the flavor component, and from that we take it inside into the presses and make ice wine. Mmm, wow, it's really sweet. The secret to ice wine, the real secret, is the acidity from our cool climate region balances off the sugar in your mouth. So you get this huge rush of sugar in your mouth, which your palate tastes at the tip of your tongue, and then if it wasn't for the acidity, it would really be tacky in your mouth, and that's the secret to great ice wine that balance, that delicate balance between sugar and acid. So we could drive around here and see acres and acres and acres of vineyard. And the other thing you'll see is wineries sprinkled all over the area. It's about 120 wineries now. And when Carl and I got our first license, there were six large wineries. They more or less disappeared, replaced by 120 boutique cottage wineries, all that specialize in very premium wine. And most of them make ice wine. A classic ice wine martini. It's three parts vodka, one part ice wine. You take ice, crush it, and then you have it shaken, not stirred, which I think I've heard some other guys say that. It does extreme stuff. If you take that classic and then you mix all kinds of other creative cocktails, which bartenders love to do and put in all kinds of you know other uh, delicacies in, we want people to see that it's not just a luxury product that is happening after dinner as dessert. We want them to integrate it into their cooking, into their um, beginning of their course with starters. How can they use ice wine um, more as an everyday product? Hello there, Michael Olson, Chef Professor, Canadian Food and Wine Institute at Niagara College. When you look at challenging the wine, even with a spice profile, like in this case, this is a tagine with North African flavors. So we have this one here. Yeah, dried fruits and nuts, chilies, cumin, coriander, pepper, and that'll stand up to the wine. Our philosophy uh, with the wine pairing this evening is uh, dessert. Our ice wine is just not for dessert. It's uh, for spicy food. If you're looking to pair it with Asian food, uh, Thai, spicy Thai, even spicy Mexican food, which we've done. We've done the uh, chicken mole, which is a spicy tomato sauce with a hint of chocolate just to add a little bit of earthiness to it. Ice white marmalade martinis tonight are made with Riesling ice wine, beautiful ice syrup, a little bit of fresh orange juice, some Jim Beam bourbon, and a lot of love. Start with ice wine. There you go. Add bourbon. Add ice. There we go. And cheers. Happy Ice Wine Festival to you all. You think about what we're dealing with here. We've got terrific aromas. The, the flavor profile is massive. It's got a ton of sweetness, but then it's it's backed up by this backbone of acidity. So the, the typical offering has always been to serve it at the end of the meal as an aperitif or as a starter course. When you look at challenging the wine, either with a spice profile, like in this case, this is a tagine with North African flavors. So we have this one here. Yeah, dried fruits and nuts, and that'll stand up to the wine. If you're looking for interesting wine combinations and pairings, and I like spicy food, uh, when you add ice wine to spicy food, you sort of lessen the heat, and you're, you'll be able to uh, open up your threshold a little bit for uh, spicy food. And the other option for a starter is challenging it from a texture point of view. So if it's crunchy, uh, super hot and even sort of got a sweetness on it, it'll stand up to the end. I just had a nice uh, apple pastry and I was having it with the ice wine and it was really magnificent because you get that flakiness of this beautiful pastry and it was great with this 97 ice wine which has got a little bit of age and some additional flavor and texture to it. My signature ice wine dessert is something I demonstrated actually at the Olympics at the Niagara Ice Wine Trifle. 
What I like to do is poach those fruits in a nice wine syrup, and I layer that with a simple sponge cake, and then I make almost a tiramisu style mascarpone cream using ice wine, and I layer that with the cake and the fruits, and that is just Niagara through and through. Because I have a very uh, high integrity about the quality that my name is going to be associated with, I want it to be the best ice wine that you can produce.